Well, I have a lot of opportunities to speak, and I try to be selective about those opportunities. And I've been invited a number of times, for example, to go to Las Vegas to speak at conventions in Las Vegas, and I've been in Las Vegas, and I know that people go to Las Vegas to play, and I'm interested in addressing people who are a little less focused on play, a little more on what they do for a living, as well as what they do for their life. So I like very much the thought of coming to this particular conference, because I have known a number of people in my life who are involved in the world of medicine, and I know that all the component parts have to work together are the people we think of as doctors and nurses. They can't do what they do unless people who do what you do um, are doing their job. And I was thinking, I always do my homework. Uh, I'm speaking this evening from having come to a newcomer's um, reception. I wanted to see who's here, what do they look like, what do they smell like, what do their faces look like. I don't like speaking this term. And in the morning when I speak, I will start by taking people's pictures which always is a bit disconcerting because I want to say, I'm in the same room with you. We are together here. And you are important. Uh, and every once in a while I will get these pictures out and look at them and say, who's paying attention to what I say or think? And I look at these pictures, people are always smiling, waving, as they do when you take their photograph. They go, oh yeah, there are those, those people in San Francisco who raise money for the health care world. And philanthropy is a lovely I think, what do these people have to have to do this job? Well, you got to be smart. You can't be stupid. you got to have people smart. So you have to understand people. You have to have a compassionate heart. You have to care about doing something in the world besides selling widgets. You have to want to make some kind of difference, but not necessarily up front. People who do what your organization does, they don't stand out front. The building is not named for them. The John B. Adams Memorial Wing of the Cancer thing is not named. But it wouldn't exist if the people didn't do that hard work to get that money there. So it's um, it's not self-effacing, but it's like recognizing that it's, well, something on the wall of my office. It says it doesn't make any difference who gets the credit as long as the good work gets done. And I see this kind of personality in the work that you do. So it's, it's neat for me to be around you. Uh, one of the issues that you have, and I was listening to group talk about this, uh, the, uh, what's it called, the grateful giver, or grateful patient. We've become so concerned, rightfully so, for privacy issues that it's really a negotiation thing to get people who are really grateful for what a hospital did for them to say this out loud. You have to deal with attorneys and releases and all this sort of stuff. Okay, so the job has gotten harder, but that doesn't mean people aren't still willing to figure out how to have a very human thing happen, saying, I wouldn't be alive if it weren't for this. And never mind all this official stuff, which has its purposes, I don't integrate it, but when it finally comes down, it's a very human thing to do for a living. And to know that it's um, the work that's not glamorous, but go home in bed. I bet a lot of these people get up and look in the mirror and think, well, I'm doing's okay. And that's better than working in an office carol all day and keep. One of the things that uh, I have learned over the years um, in being involved in fundraising myself, because I'm often the bait at fundraising events. Let's bring in Robert Fulcherman and then people will come and then we'll you know, get some money out of it is that uh, people really are, for amazing reasons, extraordinarily generous at heart. And it doesn't take much to get to that place in them. So that when I go to events to speak, I am always glad to be there because I know that if you've got money or you've got some way of contributing and you've actually shown up at this event, it, never mind what, you didn't have to come. You came knowing what they need is what you have, is the power of your money. Then you're bound to be a good person. There's no bad people in that room. Uh, never mind the games we're playing to get them there to give what they give. And I always like being in a room full of people that by and large are working for human health, human well-being, uh, the human enterprise.
has to go on. And I always say to those people, you're survivors. You wouldn't be here if you hadn't survived all kinds of diseases and wars and famines and I, something in your genes has got you here and you have to keep us going by helping that go on. It's a funny kind of attitude, but I, I will go talk any place, anytime, uh, sometimes, but in my mind I like to be in the company of people who remind me of the decency, the goodwill, the compassion that's loose in the human race. Every day, almost, I get a pile of mail asking because I contribute to a lot of causes and word gets around and so you get all these people asking for me. My financial assistant throws up her arms and says, this is driving me nuts. And I say, no, this is a sign. This is not in the newspaper. You don't see the headlines today that all this money was given for all these causes and there are all these people working their hearts out to make something good happen in the world. It's not what's on CNN tonight, but it is what's going on in the world and there's the proof of it. It comes in the mail every day. Please help us do this good thing. And that's important not to miss. So if I were to say to you people to, who are involved in your organization, thanks for what you do. It's part of that larger notion of the invisible good that the human race is capable of. 